Hi everyone, so uh, that's me with a red check shirt and this is me with a blue check shirt. Uh, and I'm gonna talk about how you can um, use third-party JavaScript to build web apps. So when I mean third-party JavaScript, I mean getting your JavaScript to run on somebody else's site. Most of the time, when you're in a web app, it's putting your JavaScript on your site. This is about putting your JavaScript on somebody else's site. So uh, a very quick uh, overview of what Leadin is. That's the product that I work in at HubSpot, and it's HubSpot's uh, freemium product. So really it's about collecting leads uh, on your website with pop-up forms and form scraping and stuff like that. And initially the product was built inside of WordPress. It was entirely PHP, and we've since rewritten it in JavaScript with a Java backend. Um, and this is kind of the story about how you can make that work. So this is what the app looks like, and you can see on the left and along the top, you've got the standard WordPress navigation and Chrome, and in the center is our app. Um, and this is actually a JavaScript web app that's connecting to sort of RESTful APIs. Uh, and there's a couple of challenges in order to make it just seamlessly work like this inside of WordPress. Um, so the real problem is that if you don't own the whole page, then you can't predict what's gonna happen. And as it turns out, there's 40,000 WordPress plugins out there, and PHP developers are not known for producing high quality code. So uh, <laughs> uh, any plugin can execute code on any request, uh, including on your own pages. So if you own a page uh, in WordPress, other apps can put their own JavaScript on that page or change the markup that's being output by your plugin, which is just a disaster for having any expectation of sanity. Um, and so some of those insane things that we've seen are changing the length of a string, uh, changing globals that WordPress gives us about what user is logged in, uh, changing Backbone and jQuery in very slight ways without changing what version they are, so we think that everything's fine when it really isn't, uh, altering $AJAX so that it just does insane things that modify the, the payload that you're about to transport. And so this works totally fine if the Ajax call you're making is back into the WordPress site, but it's a disaster if you're gonna make uh, a call to some third party API that's elsewhere on the internet. So when you don't own the whole page, you cannot trust anything. And this is true, not just of WordPress, but if you're running JavaScript on anybody's website, there's going to be other JavaScript that has the potential to interfere in the ways that I just showed. Um, so you need a solution, you need a way to trust, and you need a way to sandbox yourselves from the madness. And in spite of the shaming of frames earlier, what you really need here is an iframe. Uh, and so many of us think of an iframe as this like disgusting, unstyled thing that like nobody would, I don't even know why this is the default. Why would anybody want this to be the default for an iframe? Um, but there are many cases out there where iframes are used. So embedding a Twitter uh, tweet somewhere on your page, that's an iframe. Uh, the like and share buttons from Twitter is an iframe. Uh, the discuss comments that you have on many sites across the web, including Wired, is an iframe. The good old intercom widget is an iframe. Uh, and that's really what you really need to do to get yourself a, a sandbox. So iframes are great for giving yourself sandboxing. It also has this nice side benefit of solving the same origin issue. So ordinarily, you're not allowed to make third-party API calls to a different domain, but if your frame is on the same domain as your API, then everything works fantastically. And it guarantees consistency. You don't have to worry about the environment that your code is executing in. There are some problems with iframes. So, for example, they don't inherit the CSS of their parent page. Uh, they don't automatically expand to fit the contents. And when you click a link inside of an iframe, it'll navigate the iframe, not the parent document. So fortunately, there's this fantastic HTML attribute called seamless, and it solves all of these problems. You don't need to worry about it whatsoever. It has a limited <laughs> support <laughs> matrix. So you pretty much are screwed with relying on that. But what you can do is a series of hacks that will uh, get you over all of these obstacles. So if you have to uh, handle non-inheriting CSS, you can inject it with JavaScript. You can use some JavaScript and post messages to expand the frame to fit the contents. And there's this fantastic tag that you can put in the head of your HTML called base that forces all links to open in the parent instead of inside of the iframe. There's one final issue, and that is this app needs to be able to communicate with the page that it's embedded on. So in our case, we need to be able to read data from WordPress. We need to know what the account number is, we need to know what the API key is, what the logged in user is, et cetera, et cetera. And so the quick and easy and dirty way to do this is to pass those parameters in 
as query params to your frame. So the idea here is that you have some JavaScript, some like very simple JavaScript that you give to people. It will put the iframe onto the page and it will also create what this special URL is depending on what context comes in from the page. In our case, we also need to be able to write back to WordPress. So whenever somebody goes through the signup flow in lead-in, we need to take that account number and API key and put it back into uh, WordPress. And the way to do that is using the post message API. So that allows you to communicate through both contexts, both the parent page and the framed page. And so that tiny bit of JavaScript that sits in front will just handle the post message transport. So putting it all together, we have this iframe uh, that is your fully fledged web app that connects to your API and does whatever it needs to do. Uh, in our case, it's a React and Redux app uh, that connects to these Java RESTful APIs. Uh, and then we have this tiny little bit of JavaScript, as I said, that handles uh, communication back and forth, setting up the iframe URL, doing post message. Uh, we call it the bridge. That connects to our PHP plugin to persist credentials, et cetera, et cetera, and that sits all on top of WordPress. Uh, I'd just like to mention that HubSpot are always hiring. That's my email address. I love referral bonuses. Uh, and I'll take a question.